In this tutorial, I wanted to give you a quick example of what the code structure might look like when you're working with vertex buffer objects. To do this, what I've done is I've modified the previous code that we were working on when we were talking about shaders. So if you go to the top of this code, you can see that we've declared a couple of variables. I have shader program ID from last time. I have a glue int that's going to represent the ID of a vertex array object. Right below that, I have a glue int that's going to represent the ID of a vertex buffer object. And then I have two more glue ints, position ID and color ID. And what these are going to be used for is to go into the vertex shader and find the IDs of these two variables right here, S underscore V position and S underscore V color. All right, now before moving on, we need to look at this macro here called buffer offset. This is going to be useful for when we calculate the position of the color information inside the buffer. All right, to keep as much relevant code on the screen as possible, you can see that I've encapsulated all of these shader functions. There's a really nice feature within Visual Studio called the Pragma Directive, and here you can see I've created a region, the beginning of the shader functions, and then down here is the end of the shader functions. So I'll go ahead and shrink that back up. And immediately below that we have chain viewport, and we also have the render method that we saw before. Now inside of render, you can see that we make a call here to glDrawArrays. We'll talk about this function a little bit later on, but realize that glDrawArrays is going to pull its information from whatever the currently active buffer is. Okay, so let's drop down here to main. Right after we call glue init, you can see that we've created two arrays of gl floats. The first array is going to be used for the positions of the vertices, and the second is going to be used for the color. So, for example, you can see that our first vertex has the coordinate negative 0.5, negative 0.50, and it also has the color 1001, or red. All right, shortly after that, you can see that we make a shader. We do that in these five lines of code that was from the previous tutorial. We print out a couple of IDs, and then we start to work with buffers. Now, in lines 126 and 127, we create a vertex array object, and we bind it. And then we drop down here to 129 and 130. This is where we create the vertex buffer object and bind it. Just after that, here in line 132, we make a call to GL buffer data. And again, remember, this is how we tell OpenGL how big of a buffer we need in bytes. We have seven pieces of information per vertex. We have XYZ RGBA. We also have three vertices. And then we multiply that by the size of a float, which is typically four bytes big. Now, why did we pass null as the third parameter? In passing null, we're telling OpenGL that we want to load the vertex information onto the buffer a little bit later. All right, on line 134, we load the position information onto the buffer. And again, we pass this zero right here because we want to put that information at the beginning of the buffer. This three times three times size of GL float is the size of the information that we're about to move onto the buffer. And then finally, we pass it vertices. That's the information that we want to move over. Similar to that, you can see here in line 136, we do the same thing for the color information, except this time we pass it a different offset. Notice that instead of passing it zero, we pass it three times three times the size of a GL float, which is exactly where we ended up when we loaded the positions of the vertices. All right, good. Now down here in line 139 and 140, we dig inside the shader program and we find the IDs of S underscore V position and S underscore V color. Now that we have that information here in lines 142 and 143, we tell those variables where they can find the information they're looking for inside the buffer. And here's actually where we use that buffer offset macro that you saw up top. It's a nice macro that saves us some of the headache of having to typecast. All right, good. Just after that, in line 144, we use the program. In lines 145 and 146, we enable the vertex array attributes. In other words, we turn on those variables in the shader. And then just like we did last time, in line 148, we call glut main loop. Now when we run this, you can see that we get the triangle that we had talked about in the previous tutorial. So let's shut this down for a second. Just to show you the effects of messing around with some of the data on the inside of this buffer, what happens if we come down here to line 143, and we change this from a 4 to a 3, and we change the buffer offset to 0? Now let me come up here and run this. And let me move these windows over just a second. And if you notice, I'm using the position information of the vertex for its color. So for example, the lower left coordinate is colored negative 0.5, negative 0.50, which is essentially black. 
The next coordinate that you see here is the lower right one, and you can see that it has a red value of 0.5, and it has a negative 0.5 green and a zero blue. So therefore we get this dark red color for this vertex here. And then looking at this last vertex up here, you can see that its color is going to be 0 for red, 0.5 for green, and 0 for blue. In other words, a dark kind of green. So that's it. I told you it was short, so hopefully you now understand a little bit more about how you can structure the code.